Too young or not too young? Jungian psychological typology, MBTI, Myers-Briggs, Socionics, Cognitive Functions. If I say any of those things, I am referring to the same thing now. There was a light pop psychology aspect to all of this, and then there was a deep, dark, and highly developed social science. And I'm serious about that. If you've passed by the whole subject of Jungian personality typing, downplaying it as an overly simplistic system meant to pigeonhole people into certain boxes, well, you're fucking wrong. This subject is much deeper than you've been giving it credit for. But you can be forgiven. And keep that healthy skepticism of yours. You'll need it for studying Jung and cognitive functions. You'll need it for studying any map, really. And that's just what the cognitive functions and personality typing is anyway, it's a map. There are many maps for studying the mind, groups of people, society, the world, and the universe at large. The Jungian system, Myers-Briggs and Socionics are just branches of one system. In mainstream psychology, there's a map called Big Five. Astrology, whether it's Western or Vedic or Chinese or whatever, is a map for determining personality traits. Mystical traditions have maps of personality too. The Enneagram, which comes out of Sufism, which is Islamic mysticism, is a personality typing system that is based on archetypal motivations of nine different types. And in Judaism, there is the Kabbalah of personality. In fact, a map of personality can be made up of just about anything. A common theme seen in Gnosticism, East Indian Tattvas, and Native American spirituality, to name a few, is based on splitting the universe into four pieces. These pieces are sometimes called tetragrams. Big Five works on five types, Enneagram works on nine, the cognitive functions are eight, and the number of personality types within the Myers-Briggs and Socionic systems are sixteen. The Kabbalah of personality is either 9 or 10, depending on which Sephiroth you use. Astrology splits the universe up into 12 houses, where the opposing houses house opposite archetypal aspects from each other. You can even take the seven chakra model used in yoga practice and make it into a personality typing system based on which chakra is most energized in an individual. Which system really works? They all do, but unless you work to understand them, the maps won't lead you to insight about any territory at all. I'm going to argue here that each and every one of the maps that I just listed are all describing the same territory. What is that territory? That territory is ultimately many-layered, going from microcosm to macrocosm. All of these maps can be used to describe the human psyche, mankind and its layers of society, the earth, space, and the very nature of the patterns that govern all these things. As the Tao Te Ching says, Ren fa di, di fa tian, tian fa dao, da fa zeran. Man follows the ways of earth, earth follows the ways of heaven, heaven follows the ways of the Tao, and Tao follows its own ways. All of these personality typing maps are attempts to describe, in part, these mysterious ways. Does that sound heavy? Well, it should sound heavy. This stuff can get pretty heavy. But I want to focus here on Carl Jung and the eight cognitive functions and the 16 personality types that spring from his work. And I want to ask the question, to Jung or not to Jung? What are some ways you can count the cost of taking on this kind of study casually or seriously? Maybe you've taken a test already and gotten a four-letter type for yourself. Very good. That may or may not be what your type really is. Some people get the correct type the first time, some don't. Don't assume either way. But if you've gotten typed, read a description or two, and it's feeling good to you, or maybe even that it has pinned you down in a way that nothing ever has before, very good. You seem to be on the right track. Getting the right type is very important. It's hard to have a good view of what other people's types are if you're totally unsure about your own. Comparing and contrasting is a big part of both the casual amusement and the obsessive nature of the work that studying young and cognitive functions can lead to. Yes, obsessive work can be done with cognitive functions and personality typing. It will literally transform the way you look at yourself and other people. I'm not overselling this, in fact, making this video to warn you about just how powerful this seemingly innocuous personality system can be in getting you to the next step of understanding human beings and why we think, feel, and act the ways that we do. 
And if you'll remember the line from the Tao Te Ching, it's not just us humans. We're getting at the patterns that govern all of existence. But I will tell you now, the reason why this map can be so powerful is not in the map itself or in the territory you walk through while using the map. The reason the map is so powerful is that it is being operated by the master who makes the grass green. Who is the master who makes the grass green? Who is not the one who is watching and listening to me right now, but the one who is aware that the one watching and listening to me right now is in fact watching and listening to me right now? That master is the one I'm referring to. That's the reason why this map is so powerful. Without that master, the map is useless and powerless. All maps are. So who is the master who makes the grass green? And what does that master say to using this map? That's what I really want to know. So if that master who makes the grass green is willing to look at the territory, the grass, in this case the spectrum of human personality, and agree to the colors and categories suggested by this map to explore, to walk through the grass in a way that hasn't been done before, then it's time to begin. And the answer of to young or not to young becomes to young. And the deeper you go, the more you'll see that in a sense the map becomes the territory. And you'll see the 16 types of human beings all aligned and it will all make sense in a quite magical way. It's logically sound and some of the things your friends have been saying will make more sense. And you might get along with more people than you did before or find shortcuts so you don't have to. Each of the 16 types studies for different reasons, for some it's hard, for some it's quite natural. But this is a real worldview you're getting into now, and no worldview can contain everything. There's a risk using this wisdom called dogmatism, and dogmatism makes wrong decisions, and wrong decisions can cause human schisms. So don't cut somebody off just because they type one way, unless they deserved it already. But if you can remember that and be a good boy or girl, please give your master of grass the rights to young or not to young and to study the 16 personality types.